Live from Vienna, Austria, it's theCUBE. Covering .next Europe 2016. Brought to you by Nutanix. Here's your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back, happy to welcome to the program a first time guest on the program, Yu Piskar, who is the CTO of OGD, uh, your customer uh, of, of Nutanix, as well as uh, basically your service provider. Yep. Uh, thanks yes. for joining me. Yeah, no problem, right. happy to be here. So, you, give us a little bit about you know, your background, how long you've been with OGD, and uh, what, 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 tell sure. us about the company. Sure, so um, I've been with the company for about 12 years, uh, so a pretty long time. I uh, kind of grew up within the company. I started as a service desk employee, uh, made my way all up to the, the level of the CTO, um, but I do have a very technical background. So I'm a V expert, I'm a VCDX. I, uh, I basically uh, do a lot of the, the technical side of our, our business. And as a CTO, I'm responsible for our technical services portfolio. So amongst other, other things, we, uh, we have an IS platform, which uh, we run and operate for our customers. Um, but I do uh, all the, the technical services and also the, the skill set required for our employees to be in those kinds of roles. So I'm transitioning our company from uh, being a uh, primarily an operations-based company into the services-based company, which requires a whole different uh, uh, skill set. Yeah, and, and just uh, organizationally, is there CIO also? Or yes. And, yeah. and what's your relationship with the CIO then? So we um, uh, we kind of tackle the problem from two sides, right? So he uh, he does the business side of things, he uh, he does all the, the systems that we use to, uh, to engage our clients, and I kind of do the fundamental technical decisions behind that. Um, so we, uh, we kind of work in tandem together, um, to, uh, to provide the services both to our own employees and to our customers. Um, and my role is more of the, uh, more of the, the, the public facing and he's more of the internal, in, internal CIO. Okay, and you know, how many locations, what countries are you in, uh, you know, yeah. data center footprint kind of thing? So we're, uh, we're a Dutch uh, service provider, which means we operate in, uh, in, our, uh, in our country. We're not in international, um, that might come in, in the future. We've got five offices. Um, we're located in each city where there's a technical university because that's where we get our employees from, so we hire students. Um, and we, uh, we basically give them a year to acclimatize to being a professional, uh, and then uh, we, uh, we pick the really good ones, we'll give them an education, we'll make professionals out of them, um, which means we're a young company. So I'm 32, uh, and I'm uh, pretty much on and the you've average. You've been there 12 years, yes. correct? Yeah. Yes, so I've, hey, uh, I've been there you know, way too long. <laughs> um, uh, like I said, I grew up there. Um, but I'm kind of like the average age for our company, right? And that kind of uh, makes us unique in, um, in the enterprise world because we do service the bigger enterprises in the Netherlands uh, whilst we are a pretty young company ourselves. And it gives us a, you know, a, a nice fit with a lot of customers that want flexibility, that want a, a provider that things with them instead of just offering standard services. Great, so do you do hosting or what services yeah. do you offer and what customers do you serve? Yeah, so we're, um, we're an outsourcer, which means we, uh, we're kind of broad in the services we offer. We go all the way from service desk, skilled or unskilled, um, into the, the IS realm, the data center realm, and kind of everything in between. So um, we do a lot of service management, system operations, uh, that kind of thing. Um, and our customers, you know, you, they used to be mainly uh, either government or schools or you know, somewhere in the public realm. Um, but in the last couple of years, we've seen a pretty big uptake in the financial services uh, industries, which is uh, you know, a good learning curve for us um, and a great match for those types of customers because they want that flexibility. Great. Um yeah, things have changed a whole lot in, in the last 12 years. What are you know some of the drivers that that are uh, you know from a technology strategy standpoint driving your decisions? So we um, we basically decided for our IS platform specifically um, um, a couple of years ago we were you know deciding whether we we're going to do IS or not, um, and we were you know kind of seeing how the the, uh, the maturity of the technical solutions were compared to what we thought was the right way to go. So we um, we figured, well, we don't want to go with you know, the older, uh, either build it yourself, design it yourself kind of solutions, and we don't want to go with the, the older converged uh, systems as well. Uh, because one of the, the key principles behind everything we do is we want to automate it, we want to be able to make sure it's repeatable. Um, so a converged solution or a build it yourself solution would require like a team of 20 people to manage and operate, right? So we thought, well, that's that's just too expensive. Customers don't want it. It'll create some kind of inflexibility. Our customers are not looking for it. So we um, 
we inset when the hyperconverged route, of course, with Nutanix in this case. Um, and we also put on top uh, NSX and, uh, and VM and Exagrid and you know, a whole bunch of uh, uh, products that gave us a solution that's flexible, um, specifically in the sense that we have complete control uh, of the platform and we hand that back to the customer. So customers are able to create their own networks, create their own firewall, create their own load balancer to you know, walk in, into the data center with a physical server, put it in a rack somewhere, a color rack, and attach it to that virtual environment. So we have customers running virtual machines on top of our, our environment, as well as physical machines in like the next rack over. And we integrate that with, uh, with the WAN solution, as the WAN solution to manage their, uh, their connectivity as well. Um, and that's the kind of flexibility that's just yeah, awesome. So, so you've got the, the broad spectrum of offering. Yeah. Um, you know, your customers, you know, where are they on that spectrum? Um, you know, are, are, they, are they more conservative? Are they, are they starting to do a mix of everything? You know, what, what, what's the so adoption what look like? What we're seeing, is a good question. So what we're seeing is um, we're um, primarily uh, um, uh, matching with customers that are starting their transformation into, you know, the digital world, right? So we have uh, uh, banks, we have insurers, that are you know, starting off that transition into the digital transformation, um, and they're you know, not entirely sure yet they want to hand over all of the control over their environments because they want to innovate fast, they want to make decisions, uh, test it out, uh, get it into production fast, like an MVP style product. Um, and that's what we're seeing um, where our IS platform really helps because they're able to you know, create projects themselves, spin up a couple of VMs, create the networks, create the connectivity needed for it, and just try out all these new types of innovative products themselves. So did you get to catch the, the, the opening keynote yesterday? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm curious what you think of uh, the, the, the positioning that they had is, you know, customers want that, that Amazon experience. Yeah. And now they can buy it from Amazon, yeah. uh, or they can do it themselves. Uh, I, I would have to say you probably think that you do something similar, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, so, um, uh, <laughs> absolutely. So we, uh, um, we're in the enterprise space, right? So Amazon is uh, is more suitable for like development shop, DevOps shops, um, and our IaaS platform is mainly aimed at the enterprise customer that still has VMs, that still has monolithic applications. Um, so our um, our goal is to kind of marry the two concepts, right? Have traditional applications, whether they're monolithic or, or not, um, but also give them all the advantages of that one click, you know, the one click experience. The um, the, the ability to do everything in, ever, in that environment themselves. Um, we see that as a you know, true differentiator between the two worlds. So you, here's a question I have for you, because I, I looked at what they said and I understand it and there's yeah. a great reason why customers do things. Yeah. Uh, but the, the, the challenge in the enterprise today is if you look at utilization. Yeah. Uh, you know, we talked, it used to be you were lucky if you were getting five to 10%. Yep. Virtualization, yep. you were like, hey, 10 to 15%, yep. really good enterprise customers, you know, you're rarely finding someone over 30%. What's yeah. utilization in your environment? So we mm -hmm. uh, we actually cap it at 80 percent. Okay. Um, but, but but what do you typically find? What what is your kind of you know typical? I don't know how you measure it. Rack, row, room. Uh, you know what what's yeah. utilization look like? So for us uh, as a service provider, we want to optimize that, right? Yeah. Um, so we're always looking to, uh, to to basically cram everything we have full of of services. Of course. We want customers on there. Yeah. Um, that's just basic economics, right? On the other hand, we want to be flexible as a platform, as a service provider, to onboard new customers. Um, and we kind of want to make the promise to a customer um, that they can start within a day. Uh, so we need that, you know, that headroom to, uh, uh, to be able to, uh, to help the customer start quickly. Um, on the other hand, we, we do see that you know, um, it, it is never as much or as little as the customer um, is, is reflecting. So they'll, they'll start a project and they'll say, well, uh, we're going to bring 10 terabytes of data to you and it's going to be 20 or three and there's really nothing in between. So it's hard to, uh, to actually accommodate for that. Uh, and, but, um, but having a shared platform, having s something that is so scalable, really helps us to, uh, to keep that cost and that, that risk down, basically. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, the premise I was trying to bounce off you is the enterprise, you know, even big enterprises, yeah. Very few of them are going to be able to get to what a service provider can do, let yeah. alone uh, one of the big public cloud environments. What, what, how do you guys position and compete against the likes of an Amazon, Google, you know, Microsoft even? Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so that, that's a, another good question. So what we, what we do again is we focus on the enterprise features, right? So an enterprise cares about availability. They care about performance for specific applications. They care about security. They care about um, all those kinds of things. So what we did with our platform is basically differentiate solely on recoverability. So a customer you know, kind of uh, expects a platform to be highly available, to be performant, to be secure. Um, but if you look at the public mega clouds, their, you know, their story on availability and recoverability is you know, completely different than what an enterprise customer is used to. So what we said is we're, we're going to differentiate solely on SLA uh, for the RTO and the RPO. So we, uh, we go uh, all the way up to one hour uh, or back down to 24 hours. And that's basically the only uh, differentiating feature we have in our platform. Um, and we see customers really liking that concept because kind of they get all the benefits of the cloud. It's not their hardware anymore. It's not that their data center. Um, it is uh, all uh, uh, full service, uh, self-service. Um, all the while they do have those, those enterprise or enterprise-y features, right? Uh, how did Nutanix fit into the mix of what you do? So what we, uh, what we wanted is, uh, is a platform that's scalable. So we don't want to buy a big, you know, big box that does everything for us and then you know, replace it. And I'm sorry, it. what does scalable mean to you? So scalable to us really is, um, so we're, uh, we do a lot of uh, work in the public space, so we have a lot of public tenders. So it's uh, pretty difficult for us to, uh, to gauge how our pipeline's gonna, gonna fill up. So uh, one, uh, one month we, uh, we might get just one or two customers, the other month we'll get 10. Um, and the size of those customers and the size of their workload is gonna, is gonna vary a lot. C can you share how many nodes in Nutanix? What, do you have multiple clusters? How, how do you manage that? So what we do have is uh, two data centers, uh, fairly close to uh, each other, one in Delhi and one in Amsterdam, which is about 80 kilometers apart. Um, and we do, um, uh, we do basically just threat clustering between them, so it's one big data center, uh, at least from the customer perspective. Uh, we run about 85 nodes right now, and we're going to go up to 100 before the end of the year. Um, and, and that's one single cluster spread between two sites you're saying? Well, technically it's two clusters yeah. because Nutanix work, works that way, okay. but uh, from, from the customer perspective, it's all managed as one big resource pool. Um, the customer can, uh, can set you know, policies on, uh, on performance and availability and that kind of stuff, but that's basically it. Gotcha, and is that your infrastructure as a service? Is, is it yes. built on top of the Nutanix? Yep. Um, yep. Is there anything that's in that piece that's not Nutanix? Uh, uh, from a physical server perspective, no. Yeah. Um, so, well, there's one exception. So we do offer a physical colo facility right next to our IS platform, which integrates with the NSX bits. Okay. Um, so customers can bring their you know, physical SQL server, their old backup repository, their connectivity, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, similar like a direct connect that Amazon has, absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. That's, okay. that's where we uh, borrowed the concept. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Amazon does the same thing. It, yeah. it, it's really good. Uh, how about your customers? Do, do you have customers that bring in or use Nutanix gear, or do you offer that? to them or are they just still buying their own stacks? Well, we, we kind of want them to land on our IaaS platform, yeah. right? So as an outsourcer, we, um, we typically don't sell IaaS uh, as a separate service, but we do it as part, as part of a larger deal, as part of a larger contract, where we also do a service desk, also do system operations, also do all the, the ITIL processes. Um, so we're not very uh, uh, active in, in the space of just reselling Nutanix hardware. Uh, it, it happens once or, two, once or twice. Um, but again, our customers are mainly looking to outsource to us, so they're fine with this concept. Right. So, so you, a service provider, you have very specific needs as to, you know, as you said, your, your growth, yeah. your flexibility. Yep. How does Nutanix serve your needs for, do they do any special financial packages? Are they there for services, spares, things yep. like that? How, how's the experience for you? Yeah, so the experience is, um, you know, it's pretty, uh, pretty easy for us. So what we do is we just send an email to, uh, to one of our Nutanix reps um, saying how many nodes we need, and that's it. So they'll come in with, within a week or two, uh, drop, the, drop the node into our data center, and, and it, it takes care of itself, basically. And we're, we're uh, working into uh, a, a system where we have a spare parts depot uh, just outside of our data center where we can physically take our own uh, server from Nutanix and put them in our rack and just send an email, we, uh, we took seven servers from you. So you're delivering to your customers something at a utility pricing model. Yep. Do you look for that as a customer too or is that yes. something that yep. you need? Or? Yeah, so we, uh, we put everything we do into, uh, into a, uh, uh, an OPEX model, so we lease everything. Um, and it's just to be able to, uh, to, be able to uh, uh, 
get new resources into that environment fairly quickly. So like I said, we do a lot of public tenders and it's, uh, it's very erratic as to when a new customer wants to start when we win a, a deal. So, um, so we need that you know, fast time to market for us to, uh, to get those resources into our data center. So everything is in lease and we do everything from an OPEX perspective. Okay. Um, Nutanix has been talking a lot about kind of their ecosystem, how they're growing. Uh, what do you like, and you know what what things are you hoping to see ex expanded over time? So the the biggest thing is is going to be networking, right? So Nutanix is uh, is fairly strong in storage and compute, um, and they're just starting out in in a networking field. So as a current NSX customer, it's pretty difficult for me to uh, to gauge where they're going. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm welcoming the competition in, in that perspective because NSX, although it is a great product, it's one of the few products in that space. So, uh, so I'd like to see more competition to uh, 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 to have VMware up their NSX game as well. Um, so networking is, is one of the big ones, um, and then also the the whole backup uh, area. Um, that's you know, it, it's still in development, and and that's something we're actively monitoring to see if we uh, if we can optimize that experience for our own data centers. Okay, so you want to give you the final word, you know, just kind of your, your take on you know, the market, being service provider, uh, you know, Nutanix. Yeah. So, um, I'd, I'd say Nutanix is uh, absolutely on the on the right track, right? So, they, they basically created a new market, created a new term, um, and what, what I think uh, Nutanix is absolutely doing right is, is their, their focus on customer experience. Um, and that's, I'd, I'd just like to see more companies go that way to, uh, to really put the customer first and innovate with customers instead of against customers or competing against each other. You, Piscar, really appreciate you joining us. Uh, CTO of OGD, service provider, uh, talking about how you know, many things are changing, making it easier for his customers uh, as his infrastructure providers make it easier for him and his company to do more. We'll be back with more coverage here at the Nutanix.next conference 2016 in Vienna, Austria. You're watching theCUBE.